Guys, we got a special one for you today. Many of you have seen clips of this contraption floating around the internet. There's uh, some videos of me riding out in the parking lot uh, with tracks on it, we had tires on it. Well, this is what we refer to as the diesel powered mountain board. This was a project that we started here at the shop probably four years ago. So the concept here, for those of you who are kind of new to this project, is we wanted to build a mountain board that was powered by a diesel engine that we could put tracks on or tires. So this is the tire that was made for it. And as you can see over here, these are the tracks that were made for it. Everything was just kind of an experiment. It was all homemade, all done here. But the concept of this board is pretty unique. Basically, you ride it like, you know, a snowboard or a skateboard, but the way it works is it has an engine that sits right here in the middle, which then goes down and powers two drive lines, kind of like a transfer case. A drive line that goes to the rear, a drive line that goes to the front. The way this thing steers is it basically was intended to kind of lean so you could carve in whichever direction you wanted to go, kind of like a longboard or a skateboard. But since it ended up being up so heavy, we ended up putting these linear actuators on it. So you see, these actuators twist the board in the direction that you want to go and it ends up carving like a longboard or a skateboard. So, as I ride it, I stand right here on these two pads. This is my throttle, this is the steering, and uh, you just kinda, kinda go. And I'll be honest with you, this thing when we first had it in the shop, it kind of became a frustration of mine because we were spending so much time and money on it and not really getting much out of it. And the reason for that was because this guy right here. This is a $200 Chinese diesel engine that's basically made to be thrown away. What a piece of junk. I think it's like two or three horsepower. Um, and since we were kind of all diesel everything for the TV show, we decided that it needed to be diesel. Well, I think that was a mistake because this diesel engine it's heavy, it's loud, and it didn't last very long. <laughs> this is the current condition of this mountain board, but I'm gonna throw back to some of the footage of this project along the way, what happened, all the different modifications and changes that we've made. So keep in mind that as we're going through this video, we're gonna be here today, and then we're gonna be like three years ago in the next clip, and then we're gonna be yesterday in the next clip. So we're gonna be bouncing around, but the reason we're doing that is so that you guys can get a good understanding of what's going on with this project because it's uh it's kind of snowballing into a much bigger project which i'm actually excited about now finally after all this time and money spent on this i'm to the point where i think we can make something of this so back to the board it's got uh basically the option for two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive and the way that works is the rear drive line comes into this uh, splitter box which then has shafts that go out those have Lovejoy couplers that we can engage and disengage. We pretty much always leave the rear axle engaged because that's your drive axle. The front axle, as we thread these bolts out right here, it pushes a wedge in that basically will engage or disengage those Lovejoy couplers. So if we don't need four wheel drive, well, we can take that extra load off the motor by disengaging it. Um, this, this really is kind of like a, a Frankenstein, but it's also a masterpiece. Uh, it has a little winch on it, which I don't, it's just kind of just for looks. It does work, but it's like maybe a hundred pound winch, so it's not gonna do much good. However, this board does weigh a lot. When it's fully assembled, it probably weighs, what do you think this thing weighs? 300 pounds? Oh yeah, at least the tracks on there, it's heavy. Yeah, so the winch does help with that. But here's where our journey begins. We're gonna show you what we've done with it, what failed, which has been a lot. Um, and now as we're trying to improve this and make it actually usable, uh, we've got a lot of changes, including this new engine that's on here that you're gonna see be installed in this video. Uh, also, the end goal for this, like I said, is to prove that it actually can work really well off-road, take it up in the dirt, in the snow. We've got uh, new tracks we're gonna be putting on it and we're gonna to continue to modify the engine. This engine right now is kind of just like a, a stepping stone to what we're gonna ultimately end up with, which I believe, if everything works out, is gonna be electric. 
because we can put a really powerful electric motor on here that takes up way less space and is way less sketchy to have between your legs than this gas engine. So I think you guys are all gonna be very, very entertained by where this thing goes and uh, where it could possibly end up because uh, I'm excited, which means I'm probably gonna spend way too much time and money on it. Alan, you wanna ride this thing? Uh, yeah, but I'd have to use uh, like kinetic levitation in order to do it with no wheels. You mean you can't use it as a hoverboard, as is? <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, that, that takes oh, quite a bit of energy. What have so, you done today, Alan? Well, I built this new piece linkage right here. I had to weld it onto the cable because the cable had broken its linkage. And I made this by using a piece of welding rod and a nut and uh, then doing go. some, uh, some anviling, with a, heating it up and pounding on it. And uh, so we got a good uh, throttle linkage and I had to put ATF in the injector pump again in order to get it to build up enough pressure for that bypass spring. It took me a little while to figure out how that worked. But uh, my little 14 PSI pump I have on there, sort of if it doesn't want to pump, it's not going to help it much. I'm just going to put a little bit of this in just to try it. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on. Let her eat, Al. Let her Yes, I forgot to turn the fuel he looks, on. He looks at me and goes, I forgot to turn it on. And that's why it was taking so long to start. Hey, it's moving. It's moving. We need more power. I don't remember it being that slow. Hey, Dawn. Yeah, that in if we wanted like if you wanted to use a diesel, we need to get another diesel engine. But I think we're going to electric is what I'm told. I'll work on that. We plan hands his funeral because I'm pretty sure we might have killed him with the exhaust fumes up in his office. Oh really? Yeah. Dang it, if you would have told me about that, I could have run a pipe right through the <laughs> office. You guys done that once or twice before. <laughs> Well, I just finished uh, taking this drive assembly off our old diesel and mounting it onto our gasoline engine. But everything seems to be uh, fitting up pretty nicely on it. Just checking out all the alignments on the drive. Might have to be loosened up a little bit to run the throttle. So let's take a look at that. test the new motor on the track mountain board it uh it went on pretty easily had to build some new brackets but really fairly simple and it's got three more horsepower than that uh little diesel engine had my four that thing was like two or three horse this is 6.6 .6. and uh based on how this goes then we'll determine whether or not we want to put bigger uh, tracks on it and maybe even a bigger, different engine or an electric motor. Time will tell. Feels weird putting gas in this thing now. It's been diesel its whole life. Moment of truth. Fire this bad boy up. Choke. That's got a big cam in her, huh? Yeah. All right. Keep in mind, I've never gone faster than like three miles an hour on this thing. And I'm hoping that I'm able to get more out of it from this uh, new engine.
That's actually kind of what I expected out of this thing early on, but we never got. Oh, challenge. Try an obstacle here. Yeah, give me something. Give me a real challenge. That looks like I'm getting high centered. They're getting crazy over here with the uh, with the obstacles. It's running really well. Uh, cheap little Harbor Freight engine, got lots of power. Not going anywhere too fast, but uh, that can all be adjusted. Oh, a teeter totter. I don't know. That's a pretty steep incline. This little clutch uh, does not like does not like this. It slips pretty bad, but we'll see. It literally melted itself off. Hold on. You know that was going to break it. That's why you put me on. <laughs> Wait, that, that front or rear? Why do I always break that's everything the, I touch? That's the nest. You want them. Oh, uh, it's the front. So one issue that we have with this is the driveline angles are absolute garbage because the way the frame is built, and there's really no way to get around it unless we drop the whole driveline system. Drop so the these are frame. just like basically metal on metal joints. They're not necessarily recommended for high angles or high rpms so we need to figure out like a mini cv joint alan that's your wizard staff yeah. update for you on the mountain board it's kind of proving itself to be a lot of fun um and capable too like it climbed up over those pallets and stuff in the parking lot very comfortably 
So we got it in the shop now, as you can see, we broke the drive line out in the parking lot. So I'm gonna double down on this thing. Instead of putting it back just in the back lot and storage and forgetting about it, we are gonna keep going with this, see how far we can take it. The plan now is to get rid of these Mickey Mouse tracks and put some Polaris ATV tracks on it. We're gonna replace the drive lines with some better like CD joints. Uh, probably gonna try to adjust the clutch, tune that a little bit, just cause I don't know if, like we were already kind of pushing the max capability of this thing with these little tracks. Bigger track's gonna rob more power, um, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get a little bit more power just by adjusting the clutch. Hoping to be able to get the tracks on it and be able to get it drivable enough to be able to maybe use up at the cabin this weekend for the Snowden series, but I don't know, we'll see. So next uh, video, you're gonna wanna tune in to see what we do to this thing because it's about to get significantly more bizarre than it already is. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Would you wanna see a bigger gas engine? another I, you know, i'm gonna rule the diesel engines out for now just because diesel engines that size are heavy low powered noisy they just don't work for this application so bigger gas engine electric motor if anybody knows much about electrifying things like this basically i'm gonna buy like a scooter drivetrain and drop it in here so any input advice would be awesome i'm open to it i hear you guys out so drop a comment below and uh, let's see where this thing goes and so